Essendon unbeaten against Carlton in their last four hitouts. Three wins and a draw, of course, the draw. Last time on this ground, round 23, Essendon were playing for a finals berth in Victoria. And Carlton hey just playing for Madison, pride. Toss of the coin. Rightio, Ben, you're up, mate. All right, Madison. Tails, you go. Big toss. And it's a head. Okay, no, well done, guys. Good luck. Ben Hallett in his 100th game. Mark Murphy winning the toss and kicking to the left of screen. Well, Andrew Welsh has already negotiated the first tough challenge of the day. Handled Mick Malthouse <laughs> with aplomb. Welshy, what news from down on the boundary? Uh, thanks, Baz. Well, the ground itself, we've had a lot of rain here in Melbourne over the last 24 hours, but it's in fantastic condition. I'm expecting to see a really fast-paced first quarter, which we've seen from both sides so far this year. They start really well, really competitive, and we, that's going to really dictate the rest of the games. The starting subs for both sides, Kieran Byrne in his first game, the young Irishman, the parents have flown over for his first game, is the starting sub for the Blues. And what about this for a bench for the Bombers? Heppel, Chapman, and Cooney with Ashby. The second week in a row is starting sub for the Bombers. It's going to be a fiery start. Two traditional rivals. Doesn't matter which team is going better. It's going to be a great clash. Huge names on the bench, that's for sure. All of them uh, much awarded and rewarded players. Essendon and Collingwood, Tim. We know all about that rivalry as a former legend of the club, a current legend of the club. Is this rivalry bigger, maybe? Oh, I think this is a great rivalry. Yeah, I think this is one of the great rivalries in uh, in the AFL. There's great history between these two clubs. We touched on that in the introduction today. Both clubs have won 16 flags. It's been a while since either saluted. So there's a lot of feeling between these two clubs and has been since probably the early 80s when Kevin Sheedy came to Essen. I think he brought that hatred of Carlton to hey, Essendon with him and it hasn't left. Interesting point you make, Tim. Both of the lists have got a couple of premiership players on them. The Blues, Chris Judd at the Eagles, Daisy at the Pies. The Bombers, just Dustin Fletcher with Chappie at the Cats. So it's time to make some history of the current list and get some premiership players within the club. It is, and I uh, mentioned before about Mick and the back to the wall and... Yeah, that's what they would have been doing during the week. He put it on his leaders. They came out. They spoke strongly. He'll be expecting for them to produce today, particularly early in this game. So away we go. Round three at the MCG. And it is the traditional rivals. And Armfield takes a strong mark from the Gibbs kick. Armfield will have a defensive role on Hibbert today. So Armfield back into the team for the first time. There's Simpson. Now Simpson's kick along the ground. It was a tough one for Stanton. In fact, they all missed it. Mopping up Jones. Quick kick away. He could have done better there. And out of bounds on the full. So the Bombers with the footy in their hands for the first time cleanly this afternoon. Casbolt fed it out to Jones, nothing clean and Doherty who has been very clean for the Blues one of their shining lights this season, a good grab he'll pump it back in. Tough season last year, still finished in the Blues top 10 in the best and fairest again Jones the target and Blues fans would be hoping he can produce what he showed in patches as a dog Michael Hurley there on screen, Tim so brilliant last week against Ruffy Yeah no he was fantastic, uh, just looking at Melksham he's gone to Chris Judd well, Cameron Wood easily in the end, and then the kick, not as he would have hoped. Easy pickings for Fletcher, has the height advantage against Jones. Henderson, clean, dishes it back off, and then the drop from Everett. Henderson has to do the second and third efforts. Well, tough going. Armfield made the trip to Perth last weekend as an emergency. He comes in for his first game for the Blues this year. Still out of favour, a little with selectors last year. Just eight games. Judd almost. Gibbs. Well, a chance. Just weaves his way through. A little bit of calm and then the kick from half forward. The first major of the day. Well, not quite. Just offline. So, Doherty. Just as an indication, too, of how well Essen have played in the early parts of both games against Sydney and Hawthorne. They've conceded just four games in total, sorry, four goals in total to both those two sides. So they've been starting particularly well. Carlton strong early. Now, to those numbers to half time. So here's Melksham, Ambrose, feeding the ball out for Watson, who was pushed as he was kicked up the line for Goddard, beats them all. Doherty right there with him, and the ball will be tossed in on the wing, the furthest forward the Bombers have been since the opening bounce. Carlton, by contrast, Tim, 17th for disposal efficiency to start this season. 
and they're last in the league for scores against. So it's an area of their game they really need to watch. Watson, quite brilliant. Got the ball down to the milestone man, Howlett, who kept the ball moving forward. Gibbs tracking it back. Needs to be quick. Carlisle was closing the gap. The ball towards the boundary line. And off hands, Ellard and Hibbard will be tossed in. Murphy started forward for Carlton too. He's been picked up by Bagley, so he hasn't actually gone for a run on the ball yet. Gibbs getting a lot of touches early. This is the area that Carlton will be really tested here is their defence. Well, quickly from Bell Chambers to Hibbard and penetrating ball inside 50. Stanton's found some space. Rowe did a good job of it. And then Tui almost did enough to see it over the line. Ambrose couldn't keep it in. Tim, noise coming out of the Bombers is that Bell Chambers finally has his body in good shape. Yeah, he, he does. He's, he's had a lot better pre-season than what he had previously. So, uh, But that's a big ask for him to actually be able to hold up that ruck position on his own. Such a tough year last year. Andreas Everett, second year as a blue, streams through the middle on a glorious autumn afternoon. Terrific kick, worked oh, yeah, it wide. Jones, it. Henderson is deep, goes well in that direction. Also, Tommy Bell will get to the fall of the ball, but Henderson first hands on it. Well, he'll be disappointed and Bagley just stops oh, Henderson for the moment. And the Bombers can work their way out of trouble. See, Armfield's coming to the side and he'll be doing a defensive role on Hibbard. Hibbard's a player for the Bombers that sets up a lot across half-back, so that's obviously why Armfield has come back into the side. Good tackle from Bagley. Casbolt up in front with just the one hand and Merritt there, ball rolls over the line. A lot talked about the goal-kicking of this man, Tim, or rather the point-kicking of that man. <laughs> yeah, no, he, uh, he's got some work to do. We touched on that before. He is a work in progress, but you can improve that part of your game. He can clunk a big mark, and that's a wonderful building block. If you can take the grab, well, you can work on the kicking, that's for sure. Marking a much harder part of the game to master. If he can line up, Tim, and straighten things up, he's going to be a serious assignment for any defender in the league right now. Well, he's so big. I mean, physically, he's very big. He moves packs even if he doesn't control the ball. Wood's done that a couple of times. Got rid of Bell Chambers down towards full forward. Casbolt came with a big fly. Now Henderson around the body. Opening goal of the game. It belongs to the Blues. Here is again. You know, just a smart play. He's a very good player, Henderson. Stayed down, collected the crumb. Good start by Carlton. So Henderson, who's been used all over the ground for Mick Malthouse, he's enjoying his time at the Blues, although the contract negotiations for the moment just paused. But the Bombers haven't had too much of the ball inside 50. Only one time. The best and fairest sends it in the 250 gamers direction. Goddard, though, loses his feet. Doherty will be first there for the Blues. Simpson. He's had the ball delivered better in his time, and off the ground, Simpson goes with a boot that he rarely uses. He finds a Queenslander in Tommy Bell. Move it on! Fly on! What a frame he has. We speak about Casbolt. Bell has been chiselled also. Fletcher in game 395. Just superb to Hurley. Well done in the end, Cripps. Young Western Australian comes back in after missing last week in Western Australia. And the judge just Essendon. run down. Judge, he looked hey, up, he had nowhere out. to go. He actually hesitated. And uh, Essendon players, you know, really good job at actually running him down. But when he looked up, there was absolutely nothing there for him to kick to. So Fletcher, Stanton, Everett, easy enough for a man in his third club. It's going to be a great challenge for Jakey Melcham. Been fantastic so far this year. His concentration is something he's going to have to be on today with Chris Judd because he's going to have players protecting Chris and there's going to be players bumping into Jake also all the time. So he's going to have to have really good concentration to keep the star quiet all day. Well, that was Judd's first touch of the ball. That one, his first possession. The previous a touch that didn't earn a stat because he was tackled. Hibbert did well against Armfield, tried to keep it going. Armfield did even better in the end, a little bit lucky. Into a vacant 50. So here we go. Jones, Fletcher gave the ball away, took the high contact, the veteran. Essendon to this stage have had just the one mark, so you know, Carlton have done a great job at pressuring them all over the ground. So call to go then. And obviously outside the field of play, so the umpire's call quite correct. Play on it was. So 395 games of experience, and even the greats forget sometimes that 
You have to be inside the field of play. It was a bit unlucky there. It was a, a reaction off the line. His 395th game. Holding the man first. You grabbed him first. Grabbed him first. Go through. Well, Bell Chambers can't believe that. Let's have a look. There's been some ugly clashes between... <laughs> Gee, how do you score that? I think that was just let them uh, play on from the deck. They were both in that. Clear out, boys. So a bit of a bonus here for Wood, who tried hard last week against the Eagles. Outpointed by Lysette and Nat Nui. Not an easy duo, obviously, to go against. Wood kicking at his first goal of the season. Didn't like it off the boot. Just a behind. So eight points, Carlton. All the scoring for the Blues. Essendon yet to score just the two inside 50s. They've had some issues though early, Carlton, haven't they? They probably should be about 1-3 right Fletcher. Stay. I'm just thinking whether he went over the line there. There's a bit of a roar from the crowd. Oh, it's the action at the other end of the ground between hold, Chapman hold, hold, and Yaron. We... No, just goes in. Chappie, go. <laughs> Chappie just wants to go on with it. He's no, got to leave the ground stay. under the blood rule. You and uh, Yaron's just having Take a couple him. of words Sam, for him. So him away. Him away, I think Sam. that's a battle that we can probably go. watch for the rest of the go. afternoon. I don't think go. it's the end of it yet, Hammer. Go. You've got to I haven't... Go off. Go off. I haven't seen an umpire have to take a play all the way to the interchange gate. So, Justin Schmidt. listen here. I don't want to see elbows in the back, OK? Well, there was obviously some pretty heavy contact. We'll have another look at it to see what we can make of it. But that was interesting from the umpire. It was almost an escort to the boundary line. Presidential escort. <laughs> well, he's a three-time <laughs> premiership player. <laughs> and he's ageing. What a pick-up he's been. I mean, top ten in the best and fairest. 20 games last year. Third on the goal, kicking for Chappie. And Andrew Walker, we see on screen. What a battle he has had with his knees. First game as a blue this year. Nice to see him back. Let's hope his body holds up. Kasbol, Miss Carazzo found Gibbs. Tui, one of two Irishmen for the Blues today. Looking forward to seeing the youngster in Kieran Byrne debut. The Irishman got told that his parents have flown over for it today, which is good news. So they are here, Brendan and Pauline. His sister is in a bridal party in County Louth. And Kira and Gerard Moran are those that are getting married. And we're under told that the bar has stayed open. They've got a subscription to watch this game, and they're all there watching. So when he comes on, there'll be plenty of noise in Ireland. Carlisle, terrific. Little gift to the man that played so much as a dog and is now loved as a bomber. Over the top to Zaharakis. And they can open their account to a man that is generally very reliable. Well, Adam Cooney, his first game was something to behold. His first three goals all, in their own right, should have earned nominations for goal of the week. But Zaharakis should become the goal kicker. He does. He's pleased. So too are Essendon fans. The first of the afternoon for the Bombers. Chappy, who's an unhappy fellow, but that may be the reason why. Eyes on it, guys. Just, uh, we might see if we can just replay that again. You see the blood just streaming from his eye after that collision. Initial thoughts, Tim? Uh, I think the match review panel have a look at it. Melksham to Watson. Carlisle comes Push on a lead. Back. Pushed in the Excellent. back by Rowe. Free kick. Go through. Push in the back. Carlisle here. He was just strong. On that. Strong on the lead there. No, I think you got it you right. Might. That's a good kick. It certainly is a terrific oh. pass and somehow merit. It just got right away from him. So Tui dashing out of the back line to Gibbs. Walker, the look away handball, not required there by Rowe. Doherty now in all sorts of trouble. Tui goes in, tried to get it to Gibbs. Watson coming the other way, wanted it more, but gave it away to Bell, to Walker, to Simpson now on defensive 50. Blues need to be composed here. Kick towards the winger. Two on one. Push. Carlton. And the one sure. has won. That was a poor play there by Stanton. There was no need to push him out then. They had a two-on-one. At worst, what they should have been trying to do is just get the ball out of bounds there. Well, Henderson has Hurley to combat, but neither will need to do too much. That's a poor kick by Armfield too. Oh, just a waste, isn't it? Yeah. It's been his knock, hasn't it? Since he came to the Blues. 
Hurley to Bagley. Chapman's come back on the ground straight to Yaron and they're, uh, they're meeting acquaintances again. <laughs> well, Collier, a hero last week. Terrific article on the paper about him and Howlett. What a wonderful kick from Collier. Well done, Howlett. That's great movement, Hannah, there. But the reason why that all started was because Bagley was free where he was on the ground then. So that helped Essendon be able to set that attack up from halfback. Here's that punch again. That's, oh, that is uh, something you might have seen in the old TV ringside on a Monday night. You understand now why Paul is an unhappy chappy. It's going to be looked at, and Ooh. it's hard to defend what Chris Yaron has just done. So Ben Howlett, game 100, looking for his first. Bombers second, no problem. Bombers in front. So chappy has got the headband on now. Chris Yaron, we think with something to contemplate during the week trying to be aggressive the blues but it needs to be well directed wood again in the middle of the ground well done quick kick out of the middle by carazzo long ball ellard over the footy just lost his footing well done watson gave the ball back to stanton high ball into the middle of the ground and that's a terrific mark howlett strong chapman didn't want it there ran into trouble now cripps here's yaron so can he hurt them at the other end? This time, not so physically, but more with the delivery of the football. And well done. The ball up in front for Henderson to mark. That's just instinctive football, and how it should never have given a ball there to Chappie. But they just do that. The modern footballer hears the voice instinctively, handballs the ball, puts somebody in trouble. And uh, Yaron, just smart with the ball, just waited for that lead to open up from Henderson. And he really does need to nail this. They've had a couple of set shots already, the Blues, that they haven't been able to nail. 28 goals last year. Just one three for the season. This one a lot better. That's a really good kick. He's got two. Carlton back in front. And that is a nice, fluent action there from Henderson. So Henderson has a couple. The Blues have two. And they've got 12 of their 22 goals so far this year in the first term. Quickly out of the middle again. And now it's left to Stanton to clean up. Does well. Fletcher. Just a little bit of a pause, contemplates and finds a man with an extraordinary amount of space in merit. Short ball, not as he would have liked. Watson does well, works it wide. Melksham, got to get around Cripps, does it pretty well in the end. And back onto the left put. So inside 50, dangerous territory. Well done, Kerno. Okay, Just got in front of Zaharakis. We heard the Bombers fans when Yaron had the ball and delivered to Henderson. They were filthy with what he has done to Paul Chapman. 108th game for Yaron, never been reported, but hard to think that he will get away with what he did earlier in this match. So Yaron may or no, may not be needed next week in New Zealand against the Saints. Anzac Day football, Wood, swing and a miss. Bagley's doing a great job, you see Mick Malthouse there doing a great job on Mark Murphy. Murphy still hasn't touched the ball. He's getting dragging him deep to try and expose Bagley, but Bagley's doing a great job so far. Well, Goddard in the end knocked it to Ambrose. Well done, Hallett. Back to Goddard and then Bell Chambers just a little out of his reach. Carazzo back inside. Walker to Kasbot. Now, Liam Jones is the deepest. He has Fletcher. Shorter ball to Murphy. Bagley in pursuit. Bouncing ball. Well, Murph a little unkind and then he was held on to for a Carlton. long time. Slug him to the ground. Clear out, clear out. Take it out, take him out. Thank you. Mark's there. Umpire Ryan giving plenty of instruction. Murphy into the pocket. Well, somehow Armfield just kept it in and then lost the ball when it all looked promising. Oh, got him. So James Hurd composed as always. A year off and a win and a loss from his first two games in his return season. Watson had his hands on it momentarily. Cripps and ball for the line. Bell kept it in. No, he didn't. And the ball over the line. So it's the Blues by two points. Also two more inside 50s than Essendon. They started very well. Essendon slow out of the blocks. The game has evened up now. Watson again, handball. Heppel. High, hurried ball. Walker favoured by it. It was brilliantly done by Danaher to keep it alive. Then he gave away a free kick. Clear out. 
Thank you. Tom. Rowe, the recipient of that free kick umpires today. Ryan Schmidt officiating there. And umpire Jeffrey Long. Ball hooker up inside. Quickly to Fletcher. Got it from Heppel. And out for Zaharakis. So quickly over the top again. Again, Merritt on the outer side. There's that rare luxury that's rarely seen in this game of space. Goddard back to Zaharakis. Doherty was the tackler. Got the ball away. Ambrose crashes through against Jamison. Walker, a little give to Kerno. Gets away from Heppel. And then the Bombers come in support. Cripps quickly in turn to Carazzo. Ducks and weaves. Turns back. Goes to Walker. To Murphy, who skips about the place. And then inside 50. Not a great kick. Easy pickings again for Stanton. And over it comes to Gleeson. Back to Stanton. Now to Watson. A bounce, contemplation, trouble. Oh, oh, oh. On. The advantage is taken by Bell. It might work out. It's got to be good. The Bombers, two on one initially, and then Kasbot stops, turns, props. He's offline from 15. Well, the good thing for everyone else out on the field is it's been the two Brownlow medalists who have been run down in identical situations almost. Uh, not aware or with nothing really to go to. And they've been chased down from behind. Cooney will be conscious now. <laughs> That's right. One of the top knots in operation. A high ball out from Hurley. Judd. Watson there. And stolen. Well done, Cripps. Now he wants to lay it off. He does lay it off to Everett. Hard ball to bring around from there. Perhaps the best bet was for Cripps to go for home. Another behind. 2-4. Carlton wasteful. Essendon two straight. Six scoring shots to two. Blues by four points. Ball in good hands if you're a Bombers supporter. Again, to the outer side. And again, Bombers have got space. This time it's Hallett. Doesn't break stride. On to half forward. Just lost in the sunshine, I think, for Stanton. He's still got time from 45. The punt road in. It is offline altogether. Gee, some of the kicking's been really ordinary for both sides, hasn't it? When players have been free, they've been in space, the ball hasn't hit the target, and then they've put themselves or they've put their teammate under real pressure. Joe Watson's just come off, guys. Melcham intercepts here, just with a little bit of claret around the nose, getting fixed up by the doctors now. So, a good interception by Melcham. It was the Doherty kick that was not particularly good. He seemed to have a bit of blood on his forehead as well. Now, long ball down towards 50. That's a push out. Free kick Danaher. It's a push out. Just watching those Essendon forwards too. They've got two really the big targets down Danaher there in Carlisle right. and Danaher. In the back. It's a free kick. They need to get good separation. Yeah, they don't want to be dragging the defenders oh. to that contest. They want those two oh contests as much as they possibly yeah. can to be one-on-one -on -one contest. Here's the free kick against Rowe there. Just pushing Danaher under the, the ball. Point. Wasn't a lot of contact. There you go. There's like a forearm in the back. You He's cannot push somebody out of the contest like that. Oh, cool. Not too goes. much doubt about that. So 4-1 this season. He's started the year in terrific fashion. Tight angle. Doesn't bring it around enough. And Essendon with just their third score of the afternoon. 2-4, 2-1. Scrappy sort of start, but we expected it would be tight. We know Carlton... Despite their ladder position, despite their problems, it seems always very competitive against the Bombers. The Blues by three points. Henderson just wedged between a couple of Bombers. Works it to Gibbs. Slap. Well, suddenly in Essendon with ball back in hand. Marty Gleeson. Long ball again. Again, tall timber chosen. This time, Danaher. Two hands in his back, Joe. Push. No hands. Have a look. That's all elbow. He's still actions, not allowed to push them. Joe. Out of the contest with an elbow. That, that's the thing. I mean, that's exactly what we saw Rowe do a couple of moments ago. It's a formidable forward line, isn't it, Tim? When you've got Carlo at two metres, Ambrose at 193, and Danaher at 201. When you're coming out of the middle as a bomber, if you can get the separation that you're talking about, three big targets. I reckon on too, too many occasions in the first quarter, though, they've almost all ended up in the same position. Well, well done, Bell Chambers. He dealt with a big blue and did it well. Quickly to Zaharakis, to Heppel. Looked at Goddard, ignored him, split a couple of blues. Now again, Danaher, this time with the separation, Yaron, cleanly. And onto the left boot to space. First man there will be Everett, bouncing ball. Just holds up. Gibbs is on here. Tries to work it through. Back to Yaron. He'll take on Merritt. Well, Merritt did a good job of it. Suddenly in dangerous hands. Chapman back, it goes to Ambrose. Thought about it, went short to. He touched, play on the call. 
He's got to work it over the top. Does so now. Jamison, hard ridden, brought to ground by Ambrose. Howard around the corner. How is it all? Just offline. So the scrappiness of the opening term continues. That blazed away a little bit, Essendon. <whistles> Had opportunities to just steady down, perhaps. That's the view in front of Cade Simpson. So he takes off to the outer side. He goes with a long ball. Is that a push? Not that time. Just good use of the body there by Casbolt. It was a strong grab. We know he's had nothing wrong with his hands. It's the kicking. Hibbert going back courageously. Fletcher just holding the fort. Now Bagley. He's got two to beat and burnt them off. Murphy, one of them. That was brilliantly done. And Bagley's kick up the line for Ambrose, who keeps the footy going. Zaharakis, brilliant. Chapman. Zaharakis back in the picture. Ignores him. Goes towards full forward. Carlisle marks. Great play, Essendon. The most fluent football of the afternoon. And it deserved a mark inside the attacking area. It's a really good kick here in the end by Chapman. I mean, he really just sat it to a position where Carlisle could move to the ball. It wasn't sat on his head. And uh, he's got a great pair of hands, Carlisle. Can be a little bit iffy with his kicking, but generally a little bit better when he kicks through the ball from a greater distance out. Two goals, one this season for Carlisle, a very important player in the Bombers' setup. 27 goals last year, kicking at their third, and to give the Bombers the lead back. He's offline. It's been the story of the day. 2-4, 2-3, Carlton by a point. Less than three and a half to play in the opening term on a glorious afternoon, it's got to be said, at the MCG. We had heavy skies to start the day, but conditions much better. Blood rule. Gee, there's been some, uh, some red spilled out here on the MCG in this first quarter. It's had three or four players now that have come up in the first quarter under the blood rule. Four, I think. Good, good, good restart. Yeah. There you go. Bang. That'll almost get to the centre circles of the MCG. So the Tui Torp ends up in Carazzo's hand. Back it comes to a man who's done so much in this game. Well, Jones oh. outnumbered but pushed out of the way. They're in good shape, the Bombers. And the hero from last week. Allows the Blues a little sniff late in the first term. So Jones to a spot where Armfield can run onto it. Cripps had to wait underneath it. Stanton to beat. Does reasonably. Gets boot to ball. Gibbs, well, beaten easily and then by Ambrose. Stanton to Cooney. Sweeping handball. Hibbert, not even off a step. Just stationary. Clever kick to Stanton. To Carlo. He's going to have to just eat up a bit of time here. Ambrose has run a long way, back inside to Cooney, just forward of the wing. Now Carlisle, who had a shot moments ago, offline, and now needs to find a target. Goddard has drifted down. He's ignored. Again, it's Ambrose and... It's a block! Danaher, who... It's a block! Look at that move! He jumped... He jumped early! He stepped back into his path. It is a block. Because he jumped early! It is a block. There's the new rule, and uh, that's against Yaron for stepping and just trying to take the run there of Danaher. Guys, the Bombers have made their sub early too. So the first quarter sub, Ashby's coming off. I'm just waiting to see who's got the vest, but there must be an injury to call the sub that early. So Ashby's coming on. Thank you. OK, he was the sub, so we haven't actually quite caught yet who's gone off the ground, so... Well, this is all going on. Danaher tries to bring up the Bombers' third. And does. Well done, Joe. Bombers back in front. So with all of that going on, Ashby has come onto the ground. He is out for game seven of his career. His third where he's started in the vest. And I think we're still trying to work out who the man is that has put the well, vest it's Chapman. on. It's is it Chapman, Chappie? apparently, yeah. Chappie. Which uh, probably looks worse and worse for Chris Yaron, if that's the case. Here we see him on the back row there. He has got the vest on, though, has he? I mean, no, so nobody has the vest on at the moment. Melksham, Melksham. Bell Chambers, Fletcher, and Chapman. He might be a concussion sub, so they might be sitting in there for a while just to see uh, how he recovers. 
We'll go to Welsh in just a moment. So the Bombers now in front by five points, and Watson gets them moving forward again. It's a thumping kick. How's this going to bounce? Touched right on the line by Cade Simpson. Welshy, what can you tell us? Yeah, as you said, Tim, he's, Chapman's going down the race right now. We think it is the uh, concussion yes. sub, which means Ashby can come onto the ground now. And uh, if Chappie's fine, he'll be back out there and Ashby will be re-subbed back off to a related date. It's a 20-minute break they give the players, so they've got 20 minutes to sort of prove that they're OK. Watson, kick, superb. Let down by Carlisle. Walker. Back to the wing. Hibbert can reload for the Bombers. Still plenty of time. 80 seconds left before the first siren to end this term. Hurley. Hibbert. Now again, Danaher the target. Front spot over Wood. Just a little too high. So Wood benefiting from the troubles of Cruiser and Warnock respectively. A year for Williamstown and then Mick threw in the lifeline. So Wood tussling this time with Danaher. Murphy looks for Gibbs. No real win for the Blues. You two! Let's go. Cut out, watching. You two. Hey, come here. Carazzo, Hibbert. Oh, oh, dear idea. Oh, Down goes Carazzo. You heard the umpire's call. He fell over. We were all worried, including Tim up here. Stanton to Zaharakis. Long ball inside 50. Well done, Rowe. Front position, good mark, led Carlisle to the footy. So we've got 43 seconds remaining. Doherty is back out there. He's got Simpson on and Everett longer and Everett marks. He can go and needs to go. 33 seconds. The man with the number 33, Guernsey, with the footy. Casbolt over his head, just the one-handed attempt. Bagley got the ball from Hooker. Shoot. They're on then, Cal. Armfield was free there at, uh, in the centre of the ground, but they just didn't spot him. Stanton into the hands of Cooney. Didn't quite complete the mark. Stanton will go again up the line. And then the kick forward from Merritt. Well, the Bombers have had 10 of the last 11 inside 50s. One goal, four only. So they haven't punished the Blues. They lead by six points. And you would suggest that is what they will lead by at the first break. McMulthouse... Game 7-1-3, 7-1-4. He'll equal the record for games coached. He'll coach overseas for the first time for Premiership points. And then he'll come back and coach against the Pies and break the record. Interesting first term. Inaccurate. Perhaps wasteful from the Bombers. They lead by six points at quarter time. of the first quarter for sure. You rarely see somebody swing a punch like Chris Yaron has there. It connected with the top there of the forehead of uh, Chappie. We saw him come from the ground. There's the, eye, the cut over the eye. And then he was assessed for concussion a little bit later. So we still don't know whether or not he's going to participate any further in this game. Well, as Ron Burgundy said to Brick, he said, you're going to need a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> you could only think that he was just swinging the arm, trying to provide a show of strength without actually making contact, but it was blatant, wasn't it, in the end? Wood, who's tried hard, gets the Blues moving forward to start this second term. Ashby onto the ground for Chapman. Armfield's ball around the body. Going the fist was Hurley, and he made some good contact. Running hard at the football. Merritt did well. Hibbert, Hurley. Heppel's bouncing ball out wide for Chapman, but Tui in the road. Murphy, quiet first term, trying to work his way into this game. Simpson, back to Murphy. Got rid of Merritt, did that well, and now a high ball inside 50 again. Casbolt in front, had it fisted away from Hooker from behind. Ellard, handball for Armfield. We've seen him do some wonderful things from that area of the ground before. Good chase, Ashby right there with him. And the ball will be thrown in inside 50 for the Blues. We've seen him in the grand final sprint a few times, haven't we? Yeah, that's what you've we called him. My, my specialty on grand final, though. He's got some speed. Well, no real win. Then Heppel makes the ball his own under immense pressure. Carazzo ends up with it. Judd can finish. And he does. Well done, Chris Judd. Bombers have got their third level ball game. Well, he's been a superstar for a long time, Chris Judd, and uh, Essendon unable to clear the ball here. Good handball out to Chris Judd. He just stayed on the outside of that stoppage. Had plenty of time then just to snap the ball around truly and 
a much needed goal even though it is early in this game for the Blues. The late and great Richie Benno would love this scoreboard at the moment. 22 plays 22. Wood again out of the middle. So trying hard. Armfield on the end of it. Ashby into his oh, back free Vincent kick. In. Throw. No, oh, call the throw. Oh, there. Interesting. He carried forward in the tackle. Watson now. Uh, Hibbert, handball, not where he wanted it. On the deck. Henderson right there with him. He did pretty well, Hibbert. Won the football oh, and then Stanton taken high by Gibbs. Hold Again, poor Scalera there by Job on that occasion. Just puts somebody under pressure. Uh, Hurley, out wide. Goddard. Kicking has not been a feature of this game so far. This man generally a very good kick. And he just steadies the ship a touch. Zaharakis is on. Hurley goes back to the pocket and Goddard. It was over both of their heads again. The kick not so good. And I think Goddard apologising for the lead almost. Either that or saying, let's kick it a bit better, will you? <laughs> well, he's a great user of the football, Brendan Goddard. I mean, he respects the football, hates to waste it. And he will be disappointed with the way it was delivered to him, I would think, as Ellard tries to work his way through. A couple of bombers out the back. Hurley just does enough to keep Henderson off the ball. And the handball was good enough from Hooker. It's worked back to a man who's done it for so long. Terrific to Watson. He's got a couple of bleeding players. Short option is on. That's how you deliver the football. It's going back to Fletcher. We know he's playing game 395. If he hadn't missed him, with schoolboy football and suspension and injury. Game 5-11, <laughs> he would be playing. Extraordinary stuff. He's missed a couple recently with just general tiredness. 40 next month. The Zaharaka searches for his second. It's coming back. It's good enough. Bombers in front by one major. A very deliberate action there from Zaharaka. Everything moving in a straight line. So that's a, couple, a good finish. A couple for Zaharakis. Tim, that's the first time in his career multiples against the Blues. So, as Hay mentioned, Essendon back to a goal in front. And Wood, who continues to try hard, beaten for it that time. Heppel's kick good, and Carlisle marks ah! at the second attempt. Now, he wastes no time. Goddard is on. Feeling him is Doherty. And in the end, the kick just drifting again. Good play by Doherty then, though. He actually kept his body against Goddard's body, so he wasn't able to get that late push and that separation that he was looking for. From Doherty down to Dr. Rowan White. Doctor, what can you tell us about Chapman? Yeah, look, uh, Chappie's just back on the bench after uh, going through the concussion test downstairs. He looks like he's OK. Uh, they've got to wait the mandatory 20 minutes until he's available to come back on. That's 20 minutes of real time, not play time. That's been a change this year. Thanks, Doc. Dr. Rowan White, courtesy of Triple M. We appreciate that feedback. So Chappie up on his feet now, and he looks OK. Well, Doc's given us the update. It looks like Chappie... Has responded pretty well. Carazzo back to Doherty. Blues retreat, but importantly, keep possession. And then a dangerous ball to Yaron. It's going to work out. It was a high-risk play, but Yaron's end up with a football, and he's brought to a standstill. So the Bombers have time to set up. That's good then by Essen. Yeah, you know, they're really quick to man up the Carlton players further on. So they've just made sure that Carlton had to retreat here, and they've got to reset themselves which gives their midfielders all that time now to get back and fill those holes and make it better defensively for them to repel this attack. Well, Wood just thumps the ball forward. Not easy for Lee by Kasbot, but he's in the right spot against last week's hero. Takes a terrific grab and quickly moves the ball into the hands of Cripps. He's got Murphy if he chooses to use him. Simpson in the middle. Ignores both to space. Henderson, Everett, lead into the sunshine, knocked away. And now Collie with that dash that we know he has, kicks the ball forward, bounces terrific, starts to run away from Doherty. A couple of bounces now to half forward. Who's at home? Goddard, not quite to a right spot. Terrific hands. Let's go down to Welsh on the concussion. Yeah, well, the concussion test is something that you do in pre-season to get your baseline. So it's, a num it's uh, mathematics, you're matching up numbers with shapes and letters, and it's done at a certain speed over a one-minute period. And then once you get concussed, if you do it any slower than you did in the preseason, it obviously shows that you've had some effects from concussions. So Chappie's gone through that and looks to be set to come back on soon. Thanks, Welshie. Good work. If it's mathematics based, mine would be very low. Henderson, outside 50, long ball down towards Jones. Well done, Fletcher. How many times in his career has he outbodied 
the tall forward who he's been on and knocked the ball over the line in his 23rd AFL season and finding the boundary line as well, Tim. Not just knocking it down, knocking it out. Chappie on his feet. That is good news. Brilliant hit out. Flicked over the top at Melksham. Sharked it well for the Bombers. Now a high ball. Walker carried forward. Cooney no free. Zaharakis just wanted the football. Stole it. Got it out to Watson. Danaher. Merritt. Watson. Some Bombers names there. How about that? Cooney. Back to Merritt, just dancing along the boundary line. Goes back to the Brownlow medalist and skipper in Watson, and he'll retreat inside defensive 50. Well, Hooker and Fletcher almost collided. Worked it out pretty well in the end. Hibbert, short to Merritt, who's become a fabulous player for this Bombers outfit. That kick, not so good. And the 20 minutes is up now, guys. Chapman has come back onto the ground, and Ashby has put the sub vest back on. Thanks, Welshy. Judd, to Casbol. You, you really just... You really test your own defensive mechanisms, don't you, if you don't go forward and hit targets like that. Well, again, just an ugly turnover. This time, Hurley. He doesn't miss a target. This man rarely misses two. Short ball. Well, he has missed on that occasion. Put the moz on him. Rowe cleans up. It's left to Doherty to work things out. To Walker. Now the short ball on again. This time to Bell. And Everett continues to stream along the wing. Well, that was just a terrible handball. Missed Ellard into the hands of Gleeson and suddenly the Bombers through Melksham and maybe Watson can work it into a forward's hands. Cooney, long way from home still, but the efficiency from the Blues at the moment, not so good. From both teams, really. I mean, they've both had opportunities when they've gone forward to set something up, but they just haven't been able to hit targets and be clean enough with the ball. No, it hasn't been pretty, has it? Hurley, out wide. 78 for the Bombers, 60% for the Blues kicking efficiency, I'm told. Bagley to Merritt. Thank you, Haim. Again. And again, another target miss. Now, Jones almost carried forward. Well done, Hooker. Realised his error just a moment or two ago. Hibbard finds the footy cleanly, but again the kick into the man in front for the Blues. Simpson, Yaron, they both got hands on it. Still alive now. Howlett feeds it back for Hibbard. Just looking for a clean contest here. Hibbert, high ball to the square, <laughs> off the ground. Chapman the goal. I believe it's a goal. I'd just like to check his kick before the goal one. Score review. Umpire's call is a goal. So how about this Please from Chappie? Please check that it isn't touched on the line. Off the bench, onto we'll the ground, underway. out of midair. He's called the goal. What's the doubt? There's your concussion test right there. Just want to check to see whether it touched. That's what we're doing. It's a goal. He said, I think it's a goal. If you're quick enough to pick that up. This is what the review is for, mate. <laughs> oh, that's brilliant. Bottom left is the angle that tells us the most, goal. and it tells us it's a goal. Well, that's what I'm saying, Basil. If there's your concussion test. Up by two goals. So Paul Chapman kicks his first of the afternoon. His 100th at the MCG. His third for the season. His 300. 61st in his career, which means he's exactly 999 behind Plugger. It's it, it's it. Well, that's what Tony did in his career, doesn't it? He's been a fabulous player in the hoops, and now the sash. Seventh oldest in the oh. AFL, and he continues to keep on trucking. So too does this man, Chris yep. Judd, almost retired, thought better of it. Blues fans delighted. Fletcher out the back. Speaking of eldest... How many times has he been on the last line and done the right thing for the Bombers? Hibbert, clean hands. Hurley, you said how brilliant he was uh -huh. last week. Danaher playing the defensive role. This might just work out for Gibbs. Quick kick. Quick response. Back to six points. Gibbs, he gets his first. So the Gibbs goal back to six points. Tim Watson, favourite movie, Dances with Wolves. Watched it again during the week. Uh, uh, stands with Fist, Johnny Dunbar. Great Kick, film. Kicking bird. You look a bit like Kevin Costner, actually, Tim. Ever been told that? Bell, ball forward. Here they come again, the Blues. Henderson with him, Hurley. Now Henderson, he's kicked two already. Around on the left, just couldn't bring it around enough. Take that as a no? No, I haven't, no. A very handsome man, Tim. <laughs> Chief, Chief other characters bears. there. Chief Ten Bears, Stone Calf, <laughs> smiles a lot. Oh, you did do your homework. Wind in his hair. Yeah. 
<laughs> Good idea for the AFL Play Dat Law scalping a couple of years ago, too. <laughs> that is a dangerous occupation. <laughs> not a great oh. movie for commentators, though, home. Not much dialogue. That's it. I remember mum and dad took me to it and I couldn't read and most of it was in subtitles. <laughs> well, again, tall timber at the drop of this ball. Carlisle, sort of half man, handled by Rowe. Umpire lets it roll on. Cripps, Watson to beat. Handball comes to Cooney. Takes on Elard, did a good job. Put boot to ball. Oh, yes, I'm in, I'm in. Yes, Got it, mate. Well, how that's game 100. Has one to his name. Marks here, ben. He actually did a very good job. He sort of burrowed in under the arm here of Jamison and really oh, there, forced Jamison almost Marks to give here. a free kick away to spoil oh, the ball. Adam, got me on the mark. David, thank you, that's fine now. 15, Ben. Marks here. Well, plenty of chat. Game 100, looking for goal two. Looks pretty neat and tidy. Well done, the boy from Donny Brook. The Bombers by 11 on a Saturday over at the G. So a nice finish Game. from the man who Andrew. gets his name on the locker. Andrew. Tim, 100 games. 100 games will do that. Each club with a slightly different interpretation of what is locker worthy. Crips out of the middle. So the Blues hanging tough. They'd like the next one, though. Ellard, well done. Got the very quick kick away. Bagley, they're never easy, those ones. Football bouncing on its point. Gives it to Hibbard, who holds up and then handballs through. How does the umpire see this? He's uncomfortable, isn't he, Hibbard, when he goes to his right side. He's so much a left player. Again, he really should have come out this way, but as soon as he... He realised that uh, he couldn't get the oh. kick that he wanted to. He wanted to get back onto his left foot. Well, Judd, a little bit of solo stuff here. Gives it off. Can Armfield finish? Chris Judd's good work. Yes, he can. Back to four points. Wonderful finish. Well played, the veteran. And a really good guarding of the mark there by Chris Judd. Just kept his hands in the air. Won the ball. And Armfield, who's been really busy and lively in this first half, finishing on and loving his work. So, some concern for the Bombers. Three of their six goals have been responded to by the Blues at the other end within 90 seconds. Gleeson better this time, although not sure Goddard wanted the football there, holding the ball. Here they come. Murphy, Judd breaks free, marks in front of Hibbard. He can go back and give the Blues the lead as the wrestling continues on the wing. Marks right there, Chris. So he hambles away to Tui. How many times have we seen this? He might be in trouble here. Chappie read it well. Should have been holding the ball. Bagley. Ditto. Well, you've got to ask the question. If Tui wasn't holding the ball, why was that one? And Walker up forward marks and can go back like Jard a moment or two ago and give the Blues the lead. They're really starting to get on top in the middle of the Blues. That was their fourth centre clearance. Tommy Bell Chambers has just come back on to try and steady the ship because Joey Danaher was trying his best. Tommy Bell Chambers has just come back in because that was their fourth clearance for the Blues out of the middle. Now, I've got to say, they've been terrific, the umpires, this season with the interpretation on holding the ball, but something went amiss there. Good pressure, though, from the Blues. They would follow up pressure. Virtually identical. If one is, the other one is as well. Walker bringing it back. Not enough into the post. Three points and a bit of a let off for the Bombers. Perhaps a little lucky there. The Blues to have the footy in the first place. And Goddard now will try and settle things down and start it all over again. It's been a pretty good goal kicker, Walker, for the Blues in recent times. In fact, the last five years, top four goal kickers, Garlett now at the D's, Betts now at the Crows, Wait now at the Roos, and then Andrew Walker. Well, jumping was Cripps, but it was Carlisle who had the height. What a player he has become for the Bombers. Bell Chambers didn't get first touch on it, but got the last and suddenly becomes influential. So from the tall to the short to Collier to the old and the bald. That's great running, isn't it? All the players coming up the ground, leaving that space. Well, it's unconventional. 
but it's how he feels comfortable. Chappie, he's a good player. He gets his second. So Bombers lead nine points. That's Hamble. not holding the ball. He got it away. And then this one, throw. Okay. You apologise. Well, the Bombers, unlucky. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Karatso from the middle. Ellard, well done. Terrific That's mark by Merritt. Man. He's a courageous young man, isn't he? He's become a really oh, a good mark weapon mark around the middle of the ground. You've got to remember all the time. He's just a second-year player, the kid. Goddard. Chevy Chase said in Fletcher, it takes a big man to admit he's wrong, and he's not a big man, Baz. You're a big man. Yeah. You were wrong. Fonzie had trouble saying it. I was... In trouble here. Holding the ball. No doubt about Carlton. that. As soon as you go to ground like that, you're in trouble, aren't you? And the Carlton player, all he's trying to do is just lock the ball in there. Carlisle just couldn't get it free, but you just can't allow yourself to jump on the ball like that. So Rowe with the free kick. Got just over seven minutes remaining. Everett, who has become a good player for the Blues, gives them plenty of dash out of the back line, and he finds Gibbs. A little sidestep through the middle. Now he's not quite sure where he's going here. He finds Rowe. And Rowe ignores Jones, the first lead. He goes to a two-on-one situation, not a good kick. And Hooker stands up and marks on defensive 50. That's where they're really letting themselves down, Carlton. That kick into their forward line. Now, it has to be a half kick. They actually had players forward of where that kick was directed. Hooker will live off those kicks all day. He's a great reader of the ball in the air. And he's very strong overhead. Well, the Bombers at the moment working it quite easily down the ground. Fletcher Stanton. Now, this is the key kick. Stanton, no problem, finds Danaher, and he needs to take responsibility here and go back and slot. Look at the contrast then, though, Hammer. The difference between the methodology and moving the ball forward. I mean, they're prepared to go short, and then eventually they opened up that lead deeper, and now they get that shot at goal. And, you know, Carlton haven't been patient enough with the ball. They've rushed the ball from half back, yep. and they're kicking it to that wall of players that Essen has across half back. And there's some predictability about what Essen and do you. You know it's going to end up going to Carlisle, to Ambrose, to Danaher, or maybe a small forward, and it's all pretty systematic. With the Blues, you never know quite how it's going to unfold. So Danaher, he's getting help from Matty Lloyd, and it looks like Matty's helping out in a very big way. Terrific finish. Bombers by 15. Bombers seven goals, two from set shots today. And this man, two goals, one. The kicking action looks pretty good, Tim. No, it was very, very deliberate then. Very similar to what Lloyd used to do, actually. To Carazzo, under the foot, he was taken high by Ambrose. So, Tim, Matt's saying he's a, a really good student to work with? Absolutely, yeah. No, he's, uh, he's just one of those kids who wants to get better. So, Walker with a footy on the outer side. It nearly got away from him at the second bounce. Long ball again, not a good kick in. Stanton's going to get there first. Cooney, back to Merritt kick. Carlisle, he splits the middle. Rowe did well. Got a big fist on the football. Walker away from Ambrose. Simpson takes the mark. Welshie, what have you got for us? Uh, we saw Henderson there, opponent Danaher. Jamison has been on Danaher most of the game, but he had to come off with an injury to his left shoulder. He went down the race. He's come back up, and he looks to be okay. It could be a reoccurrence of a, a sublux of the left shoulder, but that's why Henderson ended up going to Danaher, and Danaher scored the goal. Terrific mark by Jones. That was terrific stuff. Bell to Simpson, and now Jones goes long. Inside 50 again, the small target, though. See the difference there, though? Murphy was short then. That kick could have gone to Murphy. It's as though they're programmed that the ball has to go long. They kick the half kick to Murphy. They're inside 50. He's almost within range, and they retain possession. And Ellard sits under the ball with three bombers hard on his hammer, so it was always going to be difficult for Ellard with the kick coming in. Ambrose just got the kick away. Zach Merritt's impressive, Tim. I mean, he, he missed three right. games last year in his first year. He's still 19. Hasn't missed a game this year. He's always so composed with the football. No, they think they've got a gold nugget there. They can't believe that they are able to pick him up when they did in the draft. So he 26 in the 13 draft, and he just seems so at home on the big stage. Here he is on cue, just working his way through, finding Goddard. Different stages of their careers, but they combine beautifully. Goddard, he went searching in the end, this time for Collier. And it's Tui. He gets rid of the football. Jamison, Collier, the terrier. Puts enough pressure on to keep it inside 50. And Trav Collier, a great story on him today in the age, talking about 
how things have clicked for him. Played the last dozen or so games last year. He's in the best 22 now, and he's starting to really influence things. Four minutes to play in this opening half. It's Essendon by 16 points. Wood has tried really hard. It's been a good game from the big ruckman. Armfield back in the team this week. He kicks up the line. Fletcher in best position. Those arms, they'll bring the football in every time. Fletcher back to hooker. Short now and Stanton. He can go back to Fletcher, who's stood exactly in the same spot, did not move. I think he thought he was going to get it back. They switch it now and hooker. The short ball is on. And here they come through the middle again. Bagley did well to set it all up. And the long ball down the middle and the mark is taken. A very good set of hands, Danaher. And the kick was equal to it. Howl at a hooker right and then right the over. mark was strong. And right short, over. he's come. Now the Brownlow medalist winds up. And all of that a little wasteful after a very good build-up through the middle of the ground. Cooney's kick out of bounds on the full. Again, Carlton up half-back, kick to Essendon's defence. Then they're able to spread. They're able to spread them wide. They opened up that gap in the middle, which is the gap then that they wanted to attack through. Well, the Gibbs kick, not as you would have liked, and suddenly Hibbert again looking inside. Goddard this time, as we so often see him, leading the play to the ball. Arms out, clean taken. Normally, a neat finisher. Game 250, only one and a half percent, Tim, of players get to where you did, and Brendan is now. 250, a remarkable achievement. Is, and uh, you know what he is? Apart from the talent that he has and the skill, he's one of the great competitors of the competition as well. So 205 Never satisfied games with the Saints over 10 years, three grand finals, still searching for the Holy Grail. Now he's hoping that success will come with a red sash and a nine on his back. Goddard, what a player, what a finish. Straight out. Here it is, uh, one of the best kicking actions in the game, Brendan Goddard. Number one pick in the draft of 2002. He's averaged 22 disposals a game. Most games for a number one draft pick. His former teammate Nick Revolt, 283. His last game as a Saint was against Carlton, round 23-2012. 21-point lead now for the Bombers. Fletcher again. Hooker. Got his handball away cleverly to Hurley. Around the body. Back towards the middle of the ground. Now, there's plenty of time. That's a very clever handball from Howlett. Out to Watson. They know they can score again here. And Melksham through the middle of the ground. Needed to wait for the football just a little. They want to release Zaharakis. Not a great handball. None of that particularly clean. But no blue within Cooey. Good fist away in the end row. Got the ball over the line and needed to be. Well, after last week with a minute 50 on the clock, they know they can score three times. <laughs> Again, though, they weren't as crisp as what you would like them to be when they have control of the ball. And uh, each of those possessions just missed their target. So Hurley, Heppel, all involved. Well done again. Howlett, taken by Murphy. Wood, who just keeps trying, doing the things he needs to do. Murphy, Henderson, maybe held on to by Bagley. Bell watches the footy over the line. 21 points is the Essendon lead. We've got one minute and 14 left on the clock. There's the inside 50s. Essendon with a decided advantage now in that component of the game. Well, it's Heppel suddenly with time on the clock, and that finish is just superb. Didn't overkick it, got it all the way to the line. And you talk about Merritt coming and looking like... Just get a replay of this, Hannah. Just loves the, it. it was almost like a set play the way they set this up. He's been tagged by Carazzo. There's the first tap. Chappie comes forward. Hep on the move and a clinical finish. Just watch this again. There's bang, up, inside, finish. Training drill stuff. It, it is. I, I'm, look, they would do that at training. Clubs would do that type of movement from a stoppage at training. So it's no accident. Uh, it doesn't always come off. Rodeo, but you can just see their point. celebration to know that they've actually done that a few times at training. So the Bombers' lead was six points at quarter time. It's now 27 points. Their last four goals from their last seven inside 50s. Bell Chambers. Carazzo stole it. Murphy 
You can just see the lack of confidence now in their kicking forward. Kerno, the ball fell into his hands. Uh, Harakis bounced away from him. Carazzo again. Murphy getting more of the football now. Close to half time. Ball towards Jones. One arm held. Gleason. Judd got him. Stands up in the tackle. And up it will come again. We talk about the Blues in the first term, Tim. They've had reasonable first quarters. Three second quarters so far this year. They're negative 69. Seven goals straight to 3-3 in this term. Their way. Walker, not quite. In front. Hooker wanted the mark. Ball still alive. Oh, it was close yeah, to being a mark. Come right? up again. Two yeah. pairs of hands, Carl. Thank Two you. sets of hands. You heard it from the ump. So it has been a totally be dominant right. quarter Stay now the by the Bombers. As I mentioned just a moment ago, seven straight from Essendon in this term. Is there time for one more? Merritt, 13 seconds left on the clock. You wouldn't think so. Zaharakis, bell chasing, got his kick away. Good mark, Leeson. Back to Zaharakis. Siren, mark taken. Well, what do you think, Tim? Joe Danaher. I think he's a long way out, Basil. <laughs> Well, let's see. If you go with the Tory, you'd think so. <laughs> no, he's going to have to go for the torpedo, but uh, he's going to have to kick this all of 65, 70 metres to get it through. Well, he's got no support from any of his Essendon teammates. No. Nobody close to the square, so they don't think he can get near it. Is he lining up with the tour? This is for eight straight in this turn. It was a high ball. Nothing much on it, so that will do the scoring. Seven straight to 3-3 in the term. Essendon's way. It is half-time, and Essendon in command. They lead it by 27 points. So the last half about to get underway, and it is the Bombers who have put a bit of a dent into this Carlton outfit. They were embarrassed, really, in that second term. Seven goals to three, and after a reasonable opening term as they have in the opening two rounds the Blues couldn't find a way forward or through the majors in that second term Everett a spiral ball forward again without too much system and again just a shout out to all those in Emo's Bar in Louth Village the whole wedding party watching on including Kieran Burns sister or Casey as he is known to all the Blues great to have the parents here watching on at the modern day Coliseum Gibbs last year's best and fairest Shoulder to shoulder on that occasion with Hooker. Runner up in the Essendon best and fairest. And what a moment he had late in the game last weekend. So the Bombers trying to make it back to back wins after that extraordinary, remarkable win last weekend that will be remembered for years to come. Stuff of legend. And Collingwood await this out outfit next weekend. Well, that's what Carlton have to do. I mean, it's not easy to correct that, but that would have been part of the concentration at half-time for Mick Mouldhouse about just lowering their eyes, being a little bit more methodical when they've got control of the ball and hitting those targets, just not bombing the ball off half-back, giving their teammates some chance of being able to get involved in the play. A couple of Brownlow medalists, jaw to jaw, shoulder to shoulder. This time it's Judd who gets the best of it and Bagley and after the kick got moved forward, just got wrapped up quickly. He had a terrific season last year, Bagley. Heppel is doing the ruck work. So too Watson, Everett. Hurried kick forward and again, hard work for the Blues forwards. Hurley, after the battle with Henderson, got hold of the football. Hibbard got wrapped up by Armfield and held up, stopped in his tracks. Totally dominant. The Bombers in the second half of that second term. We remember Judd was back, he could have had a shot on goal, and it was to give the Blues the lead. They really blew them away in the second half of that second term. So, they just look like a team without confidence at the moment, and obviously dropping the first two and that big loss across in the West. Melksham and Judd standing toe-to-toe -to -toe for a moment off the contest. Here's Stanton, ball around the body into the arms of Everett. Didn't go very far, and it will come up again. Just not sure where to go. No fluency to their play. Judd down. That was very clever. Back on goal. Hibbert touched. And over the line in the end. Rushed over. Judd doesn't need a lot of space. Just his eighth disposal for the game. Another stoppage win by Carlton. So up to 31-15. I mean, that is a massive gap. And they really should have been able to score more because of that advantage. Well, here's a chance for Watson. He's... 
Checked by Carazzo. Heppel has space. So too Hooker. Back to Heppel. He'll back himself against Casbolt. Kick is on to Ambrose. Just a little bit too hot in the end. All right. Remarkable what this football side is doing with at any pre-season games for so many of the players out on the ground. Against Sydney, so brilliant for three terms. Against Hawthorne, it was something that fo so few could have scripted. And now against the Blues, seemingly on their terms. And Collingwood await. Doherty, Walker, now to Carazzo. And it might have come undone again for the Blues. I tell you what Essen did really well then. They actually blocked the exit play. Carlton looked like they were going to escape from the outside or on the outer flank. Essen players swung into action really quickly. They blocked that exit. They forced them back down the line where all the numbers were. Bombers by 26 points. Wood, clean possession. Done that a few times. Got a half-distance kick away to Bell. Tackled by Cooney. Ball into the middle of the ground and Casbolt. Again, not clean hands for Simpson. Has to go back to Casbolt. Howlett closed the gap quickly. Yaron, not the number one man for the Bombers fans out there today. And the mark taken by Everett, who's gone forward. Short one is on, and Ellard marks. But still outside 50. Murphy's on here too, out wide. And not spotted. He goes instead to Yaron. And look at this again, Tim, the uncertainty that we spoke about. In the end, just a long kick from Yaron, a nothing kick. Just blazed away and are behind. So the system has broken down going forward for the Blues. They just completely lacking confidence and a plan when going inside 50. So Fletcher, one of very few players in the history of football to announce various contract extensions by both social media and Telegram. Looks for Zaharakis and Mick Malthouse. He just looks frustrated, angry, and right now, without any real confidence, it would seem, in what his players are going to deliver. To New Zealand, this outfit goes next weekend. There's been a rugged start for the Blues so far this year. Trailing by 25, and right now the Bombers seemingly doing it pretty easily. Hibbert to Ambrose. Hibbert continues on. And Melksham, he must have just come onto the ground because he's got 40 metres. And the kick again, terrific. It's yeah, just got much more system to it, Welshie. Yeah, Melksham just come on then for Zaharakis, who's just come up in the hands of the doctors at the moment. Looks to be a lower leg injury. Well, Watson thought about it, then again. Kicked it to where he wanted the player to be. Carlisle knew what was happening. And if you're a Bombers fan, you'll be enjoying the afternoon at the G. It is Jake Carlisle who can go back and try and do more damage. He has been such a target in the first three weeks of this 2015 season. They're on the same page, though, Essendon, aren't they? When they've got control of the ball, they look like they know exactly what they're doing. When they spread, they're creating spaces for each other. Gaps are opening up. Other players are leading into those into the forward line. And conversely, Carlton just don't seem to have the same system. So a minor score only for Jake Carlisle this afternoon. Well, Danaher didn't move straight over his head. The ball flies. Bombers, the first of the third. Last five goals of the way of Essendon. Presto. Captain Phillips Welshie, one of your favourites. Your favourite, in fact. Yeah, there's so many to choose from. I had to narrow it down to Captain Phillips. It's a terrific, more modern movie that I've seen of late. Captain Watson for the Bombers with the footy in his hands. Out to Chappie. Zaharakis is off the ground. Well, she, uh, we saw him get a kick to the knee uh, walking along the boundary line now. How does he look? Yeah, no, he, he'll be fine. He did cop a big kick into the shin and he sat on the ground for about 30 seconds. Plenty of movement up and down the boundary line in the doctor's hands, but I'm sure he'll be back out for the Bombers. Plenty of room for Dustin Fletcher out to Gleeson. And again, they've got so much time and space when they've got the football. And Watson just drifts forward on half forward. He marks, ball inside, 50, and gee, that was way too easy. Carlisle marks the ball on the boundary line, and gee, all the systems just breaking down for the Blues at the moment. Carlisle, big grab, Bell Chambers in the square. Jake, hey, hey, Jake, hey, hey, Jake, clear out. No, 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 just outside. Clear out, guys, side. Jake, Jake Melcher. Right out, 
Jake. OK, Tom. Tom. It's obviously a bit being said there. Meanwhile, okay. Tommy Bell Chambers, he was about to have his Jake. shot and called back. Jake. For his first score of the afternoon. You know, you go back and you watch that. That's what really annoys you about watching footy. You go back and you watch the way that he actually prepared himself to have a shot. It was like he was in the park on a Saturday afternoon, not at the MCG. That's really disappointing from Tom Bell Chambers. Well, he did all the hard work, took the mark, should have let the skirmish settle, go back and kick it as it is a behind. Essendon by 32 points. I'll get another opportunity here, the Bombers. Heppel, Watson, and now it's in dangerous territory. Carlisle taking the slips catch. They can reload again and hopefully Carlisle is more accurate. Opportunity to kick his second and the only two goals of this third term. I've got to say, Haim, the body language of the Blues just looking around their players is not flash at the moment. A lot of heads being thrown back and heads down. Not good signs at all. So Carlisle has won for the afternoon. 1-1 one, one in fact. 32 points to the margin. Well, disappointing execution too. So Bell Chambers and Carlisle both offline. Bell Chambers inexcusable. Carlisle didn't really kick through the football. No, it was just a stab, wasn't it? We talked about that earlier. You know, when he's further out or further distance from goal he actually kicks right through the ball it's a completely different action so Simpson to himself that was plan A not sure that he knew what was coming next Gibbs gets across to support now a kick towards the wing Jones got high couldn't mark Gleeson now to mop up he got the foot he just couldn't quite get it away to Fletcher cleanly had time Hooker Goddard Heppel Hurley rather and then it comes back to Fletcher Came from Hurley and now Hibbert up the line. So this is where they've been able to be in total control, the Bombers. And again, Ambrose free. We talked about the loose ball that they got, Tim, in that opening half, particularly in the second term. And they've been able to move the ball almost at will from the back half to the front half, although that kick, not a good one. And Rowe just gets in the road, takes the mark and goes back to Simpson, who started all of this off with a kick to himself a moment or so ago. So the only man in the defensive 50 is Jamison. His kick to the outer side looks OK. Maybe it's been lost in the sunshine by Bell. Works out OK. Armfield just has a little bit of a shimmy. Back into the hands of Henderson, who's kicked a couple of majors for the Blues. Well, for Hooker, he couldn't have asked for it to be delivered any better. He lives off those, doesn't he? He's just a great intercept, yeah. Mark. Reads it almost as if he's read it before and knows how it plays out. Ambrose to Collier. He'll back himself with speed to work his way through Blues. Does exactly that. Now the long ball. Danaher, Jamison. Holding, Jamison, Carlton. Heater, heater, heater. Here. Back here. You take it, mate. You take it. Yeah. Uncontested oh, marks oh, now, something oh, like uh, 20 to 4 for this quarter. So yeah. Essendon is still out there playing the way they want to, and Carlton just haven't been able to put enough pressure and disrupt them. And Tim Marks is 89 to the Essendon, 40 to Carlton. So they're restricting them with their ball movement. They've got to get a man now, Carlton, when they're coming into uh, into def the defensive area. They need to make sure they've got a man because or else Bombers will just keep wearing them down with short kicks and getting those uncontested marks. Good hands, Henderson. Oh. Murphy again took off in one direction and now Bagley got him. Luckily, just got the ball away. Casbolt back to Kerno and again, just nothing to go to. Ball up the line, Jones. Well done, Fletcher. As Tim mentioned earlier, the spoil, but not only the spoil, able so often to find the line. He debuted against the Blues 22 years and 15 days ago, his 14th game against Carlton. So durable and so good. Judd, 40th game. Now through the middle. Slow to get the ball moving. It's a high ball inhibited under that football. Kerno's kick was a probing one. Arm field, that was clever. Bell, top of the square. And finally a goal for the Blues. Here it is, Ellard just uh, releasing the ball there in Armfield. You know, he's tried really hard just getting a scrubby kick, but that player there, Bell, just positioned himself at the top of the square. There was no player from Essen anywhere near him and a pretty simple goal. And Carlton, look, they, I reckon they're still in this game. They just need to peg back a couple of goals before three-quarter time. 
Well, that goal was more industrious and scientific, though, wasn't it? I mean, yep. it was just will more so than anything else. And it gets the Blues back to 27 points, as the margin was at half time. Six points at quarter time in favour of the Bombers, but a seven goal to three second term opened up this game. Ten minutes left in this term. Tui, quick kick forward. The Bombers haven't put the Blues away. What can Tommy Bell do here? He left it behind. It was left to Henderson to mop up. Now, tough ball for any forward anywhere in the world. Essendon! Essendon! No. There was no hold, though, Walks. I thought it was good body work, and then you wrapped it around the head. For all the arguing over the years, I still think the umpires have got their noses in front in regard to decisions overturned. Hard to think of an argument that's been won by a player where the umpire concedes and gives it back to the player. Andrew Walker, for all his arguing, sees the ball kicked out of his way. And, well, it is desperate times now for the Blues. Well done, Cripps, Kerno. Front spot, Jones, Collier, just a hand onto it, Fletcher. I, I, know, I know I'm banging on about this, but the stoppages now are 36-17, which says to me, like, Carlton's still very much in this game because they're able to move the ball. What they just need to do is just be a little bit more patient with the ball when they've got it. Here they go, they get a free kick here. He's down picking up the ball. And got Gibbs with a set shot. Inside 50 is only five difference, Tim. 40 to 35 favour the Bombers. They're very much in this game. Very much in this game still. There's the free kick there, just a little bit high from Ben Howlett onto Gibbs. As long as they can maintain their aggression around the contest and they're still winning the contested possession by, you know, a huge margin. That's right, Ed. That's 15 gone. Take it out, boys. Well, Gibbs kicked the Blues' second goal of the second term. Is to get it back under four goals in the manageable department. Well, last year's best and fairest is offline. That's a let off. Six goals, ten now for the Blues. So 17 scoring shots to 16. Essendon by 26. So Michael Hurley with a footy in his hands, he sinks the slipper into it. That was a very good kick. He made Zaharakis get to where the ball was going to go. That was good though by Carlton. They moved really quickly to stop that second kick. Essen looked like they were going to be off. They'd opened up the space on the wing, but they had nowhere to go. Really good defensive play by Carlton. And that knee of Zaharakis looks okay. Now Goddard against Gibbs downfield. Brendan. Jeez, that's as angry as I've seen Brendan Goddard. Oh, Two number one draft picks toe to toe. Oh, there now. Or Help shoulder back. to head, as it turns yeah. out. So frustration from Gibbs. Cooney with that downfield free and to not a good kick. Doherty just Jones, dropping into the space, filling the hole and taking a mark. He's a good player, Doherty. It was terrific last week. One of the Blues' few winners. Back in the direction of Goddard and Jones. Just got there and caused enough pressure to see the ball spill over the line. There's that uh, late contact by Gibbs. Nothing more than a free kick down the field for that. And a bit of a mouthful from the former number one. Brennan Goddard was making it very clear that he was taken north of the shoulders. Chris Yaron already in trouble. Job, the third man this time. Carazzo did well, rode the tackle off the hand of Doherty into the hands of Bell. And then to Judd. Well, Henderson out muscled by Hurley, who's starting to make a name for himself as a defender. Collier, he's making a name for himself, running all around the ground. Watson, he was a part of the stoppage. He was the third man up. Now he's delivering it inside 50. Well done. Zaharakis. Go back and kick it. Well, he's already got two for the afternoon, David Zaharakis. Again, look at the difference in the methodology when they go forward, like that break, that first one from Collier. Now, that's designed on that space. They leave that space so they can attack through there. They hit that, and then they've given themselves the opportunity to kick a set shot. This for three. 
And David Zaharakis extends the margin. 32 points again. He's got three for the afternoon. So three for David Zaharakis. We saw him off briefly oh, with a guys. knee injury. The footy was kicked into his knee. It caused him a little bit of pain, but had that assessed. 13 disposals, three goals. He's been really good. Bell Chambers with a bad miss after a big mark in this term. He won the hit out, taken high. Adam Cooney. No, he stopped immediately. So no advantages you heard. There might be some here, though. Merritt, the sweeping handball forward for Gleeson. So they can attack again. Bagley was breaking. It didn't go that way. Not a great kick in from Gleeson. It might work out perfectly. Stanton over the top. Goddard in game 250. Watson, the skipper, goes short again. Terrific play by the Bombers. Joe Danaher marks. And Mick Malthouse, non-plussed. Well, I think he's looking back at the bounce, thinking there's our afternoon. Ball was butchered. Mm. Mm. And then just skipped over the top right there. Right there. Yep. It brings Essen into play. The Colton defenders in the right hey, position. So this for the biggest lead of the match. If he kicks it, it'll be 38 points. And a chance now for Joe Danaher to join David Zaharakis with three goals for the Bombers. He's kicked 2-1 this afternoon. He's looked dangerous, looked lively, and looks really accurate. That's a great kick, and it is the biggest lead of the game. 38 points the Bombers' way. There's a deliberate action again. Eyes on it, guys. Over the ball, really compact style about kicking now, Joe. Well, despair keeps climbing through the Blues' window, and they are in a bad spot, 38 points. Their systems are failing, and the Bombers look like they might be eager to extend this margin and look most likely to do so. Oh, Carlton! The goals that have come for the Blues have been without any real system. And from some unlikely sources, Jones, strong mark, needs to go back and do what he's yep. being paid to do. This is when he's at his absolute... He's got a really good pair of hands, Jones. Watch this, he just gets a long run launch at the ball. He's a good jumper. They really need him now to go back and kick this goal. They missed their last set shot through Gibbs. They had that opportunity when they looked like they were really challenging the Bombers. Now they've got another opportunity. He's taking his time. It's a really deliberate That's 15, go on, approach. He needs to settle himself. He's got that 15 seconds before he gets onto the, the runway. Oh. Five years with the Dogs, 66 games, never able to cement his spot. Would love to do so as a blue and, well, it's another ball that's just wasted. Just skinny. Well, she, uh, the sub next to Mick Malthouse, uh, he's a fast learner. He's worked out that jumping around near the coach might get him noticed, but still no sign of the vest coming off. No, I think it's not too far away, though. Mick had a quick word to him. He saw him, so now he's just standing right beside him, waiting for the tap on the shoulder. Got a uh, great kick into Heppel, and now Collier just couldn't go, and you heard the call, touch ball, Merritt. Jamison closed him down. Murphy taken high by Ambrose. That's it. That's it. That's it. Yep. Been some spite in this game for the duration. So an untidy opening. Chapman, of course, off the ground, concussed temporarily. Well, at least off for the concussion test. Yaron got him. Gibbs moves the ball forward after getting it from Murphy. And the ball's over the line. Danaher just making sure it got across. So 37 points to lead and still the sub with the vest on. It's the right colour though. Aye, aye. High ball inside. It was a quick kick out by Judd. That's disposal number 15 for Judd. Chopped off cleverly. Gleeson and now Hooker with the footy. So three and a half to play. Essendon by 37 points and the ball in the arms of the skipper. Well, man with space, as he had at the right time at the end of last weekend's outing. Terrific pass. Arrakis just had it knocked away at the last moment by Everett. Yep. Sure, Gleeson, Tim, just whipped the ball across the ground. He is built like a whippet, isn't yes. he? Yes, you know, he's a running machine, he is, and uh, a very much improved player has been able to force his way into that back six for the Bombers. 
So dangerous times here for the Blues. Three minutes out from three-quarter time. Margin is 37. Armfield, part of the last goal for the Blues. Heppel. Bounce looks after him. He looks after Hibbert. In turn to Hurley. Back to Stanton. Whips over the top of the 250 gamer. Heppel retreats. Hurley. Well, he won't know he's coming, Hibbert. And Carazzo, he bulldogs Hibbert. Had no time to get rid of it. Holding the ball. No genuine attempt. Well, you heard the view of the man in green. What can they set up here from this position, the Blues? It's a kick in hope. Well, again, it's a big pack. It's going to take something extraordinary from the Blues to get a clean win of the football. Cripps did well, rode the bump, put into space. Murphy ran into the space, keeps a calm head, finds Walker. Just on his distance, you'd think, Bell. Wow. They've got space here. He runs. He's ignored. Bell bounces between three Blues. Yeah, and he'll get cheered for the rest of the afternoon. He took a swipe at Chappie. And the Bombers fans won't let him forget it. Lovely kick onto the chest of Everett. Thanks, Chris. Thanks, Paul. Take it out. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it's just a must right now. For Andreas, deliberate approach, good kick, not a shuffle from the umpire. Back to 31. Terrific goal there by Everett, one of the shining lights for the Blues this year. But what an exciting time it is for young Kieran Byrne. The young Irish fella's just come on. It's going to be partying in the wee hours over in Ireland at the moment. Two very proud parents sitting up in the stands in Brenda and Pauline. Hey, we wish him all the best, Kieran Byrne, wearing the number 38. Guernsey, the 20-year-old from Ken County Louth in Ireland. There are mum and dad in the middle. Great moment for them. Just terrific stuff. And four Blues, of course, have been on lists at... Uh, four Irishmen have been on the Blues list. Uh, Satanta was the first of them. Zach Turi, Kieran Sheehan currently along now with Kieran Burns. So we might not be too far away from all three Irishmen playing for the Blues on the one day this season. Here's the footy. Out towards the wing, and Doherty. So they're looking for two in a row. The Blues, a rare opportunity to do that. And Yaron on the end of it. It was a good kick from Doherty, although swinging wide as it was, takes him right up on the boundary line. That's great from Carlton. They've moved the ball from a stoppage on one side of the ground all the way across the ground. And then we know Yaron's a really smart player. He found this space because he timed his lead. He held onto it. So Yaron hasn't kicked a goal this season one behind this afternoon big fly from a couple of defenders wow see henderson down at the back of that pack and some concern from hurley for him it was hurley that got the ball over the line in the end with a big fist Gee. he's on his feet now a little bit slow to get going bombers by five goals and, and, and Tim, the, Car the Carlton player that actually made that switch and created some run was young Kieran Byrne. So it shows the excitement of young players when they come on free-flowing and it's maybe what Carlton need to get them back in this game. Yep. I think it's, uh, it's a good move to get him onto the ground. Maybe they could have brought him on a little bit quicker earlier. The wiry Gleeson to Stanton. Well, Danaher has to wait. Jamison, he was given a pretty easy task in the end, knocked it away. Rowe does the roving, short ball. Well, left behind by Cripps, Stanton makes him pay, drop the football, Watson, clever little flick to Ambrose, hurry, kick forward, Simpson's got to stand up, did a good job. Oh. Is that against Boone, then, just think, for the shepherd out? No odds for the footy, that's a new interpretation, mate. Here it is, that's it. yeah. Gee, there wasn't much in it, a bit stiff. Surely there's a... Uh, Debutant claws on that. Another goal to the Bombers. Right on the siren. So a tough way to start for Kieran Byrne. Well done, Michael Jamison, just getting around him and saying, relax, don't worry about it. There'll be plenty more of tough times ahead for the young Irishman. Essendon, last kick of the third term. Sees him lead it by 31. Afternoon football from the MCG and the Bombers right now lead by six goals. It's 14 6 90. Carlton 7 12 54. Four goals to two in that third term, seven goals to three in the second. The worm tells a big story.
Big news there. We saw Adam Cooney come off late in that quarter. Looks to be a hamstring. Is there any more information you can give us? Uh, no, he'll be assessed at the start of the quarter. We'll sub him now, and then we'll, we'll have a look after the game. He gets scans and all those sorts of things. So Ashby gets his chance now coming on of the sub. Really, the development of this young Essendon side's been terrific, but it's important. Carlton are going to come now, and they need to be ready for it. Yeah, we knew that. Carlton have uh, been really good in the contested ball all day, and the clearances and well, what we want from Jason and the rest of the players is, is that run and carry, and we'll see how we go in the last quarter. Thanks for your time. Good luck. Thank you. That's disappointing for Adam Cooney. Great thing about playing with Essendon would be playing Anzac Day, I would think, Tim, and a hamstring the week prior would be mm. really disappointing for him. Yeah, he would have, uh, I think when he was recruited by the Bombers, he would have looked at those big games and he would have marked that one down as one that he really wanted to participate in. It's a real shame, uh, generally, even if they're a, a, a slight hamstring, you're talking about two to three weeks. Pretty relaxed, the Bombers. We saw Jake Melksham. And Joe Watson just having a bit of a laugh before Melksham peeled off and went to Judd. 14 disposals for Judd this afternoon. He had 12 in the first term last week against the West Coast Eagles. And there they are in the foreground wrestling again. I'll have it again. So the umpire asks for the football back. And we've lost one second on the clock. There's been a bit of talk about whether that clock should reset from the bounce. One second might have mattered last week for Essendon in their game. I don't think it's going to matter this week. Watson again gets the ball moving forward. Chapman, Tui right there with him. Support from Murphy arrives. Handball back to Simpson. He kept the football inside the field of play. Was that the best option? It was. And well done by the young Irishman. Got his hands on the footy. They kept the ball alive. Well done, Byrne. That was good composure there. And he's chased good as well. The ball, though, coming back the other way. Watson, Melksham. We saw them with a laugh at the opening bounce. High ball now, back towards Carlisle. Almost, he had two bites of the cherry, not the third, and Doherty gets it from Rowe. Well, he just runs into trouble. Danaher is yeah. never going to let him pass. Well, 3-1 for the afternoon. Young man with an old man's moustache decides to give it off. Ambrose well, <laughs> left it behind Murphy. Quick give. Well done, Tui. Kept his composure. Little fumble from Rowe. Tries to spiral it away from the Blues goal. Out goes Hurley. Inside. Well, Gleeson, he wanted it. Watson wanted it more. Caught him out of it. The youngster obliged. Watson delivers to Melcham. I think we've found where Adam Cooney has done his hamstring. We'll show you that in just a moment, but again, Watson, a beautiful deliverer. He is a master of his craft. Works so well amongst the mayhem of it all. Poor kick from Melksham. Pulled it early. Guys, I'm just watching Benny Howard as well. He's spent a bit of time on the ground. The physio's been out to him, just holding his left hamstring. So in his 100th game, he's uh, just looking a little bit sore at the moment. Tui short to Doherty. He hits the ground running and drives the ball towards Jones. Used the body OK, said the umpire. Yeah, he's struggling right down in front of us at the moment. Uh, he had to run with Simpson. Are you quite right, Busher? Well picked up, Welsh in the long ball is a good one. And Casbolt Mark sliding to his knees. Essendon by 37 points. A long ball towards Henderson. Tag teamed. Not much chance for Henderson to fly. So Left of screen, we're looking at number 13. Sprinting, yeah, pulled up really suddenly there, didn't he? Don't Trying to get away from Cripps. And as a result, in our box on the right of screen, just with his hands up to his face, he is disappointed. And that would be a shame for him not to be out here next week. Game, he would have. The way he pulled up there, though, Baz, I mean, that's something that uh, looked pretty sharp. So I would say that's a three to four week hammy, that. Yeah, it is bad luck. So ball tossed wow. in inside 50 for the Blues. Gibbs went back and found the footies, kicked the goal, not this time. All clear. Just sneaks it in for a behind. So we're looking left of screen. Hard to hide that. Here it is again. He just runs. Took off that sudden burst. Bring it in. Play on. Out of the square. Well, I know you've been disappointed by some fundamentals in this game, Tim. Uh, the Bell Chambers kick on goal was one at that end and almost unforgivable. He's just losing sight of where he was, but 
don't need to get that close, do they? No. And uh, we know all afternoon Cutler have been really dangerous at stoppages. They currently lead 43-20, so can they actually conjure up a goal from this stoppage? So Wood it will be to do the ruck work against Bell Chambers. It was third men coming from every direction. One of them hooker, and he got the footy back second time. Close to the line, over. Here are the clearance stats, 43 to 20. I mean, that's a comprehensive belting by Carlton, but okay. they just haven't Run been able to make enough of those. And uh, really, it's been their turnovers. Gresson have scored really heavily from Carlton's turnovers. They've really punished them every time they've had control of the ball. The uncontested marks have been all Essen's way, so really they've played the game the way that they wanted to play. 33 to 11 clearances in favour of Carlton since quarter time. Mm. Well, it's a massive gap. The scoreboard doesn't tell the story at all. Judd, this time, inside 50. He's just offline. Off there, Steve. Cheers. Yep. Again, though, they've really, they've really just walked out of the stoppage, Carlton. I'm not sure whether it's been a huge step backwards given what we've seen from the Blues, but it certainly hasn't been a progressive afternoon for Carlton. They trail by 35, and you sense the margin will grow. Watson, he's a serious player. So Watson on the end of it, the skipper. His 32nd disposal, his opening goal, 32 and Watson. They go together in Essendon colours, don't they? Good player, that kid, Tim. 100 to 1, he'll bite, Holmes. <laughs> I will bite, I'll bite your ear off. The band of Holyfield. <laughs> sort of. So, Bell Chambers wins it from the second attempt to get things moving. In the back, Essendon. So, we've got a whistle, and Ambrose with the free kick. Get him right here. Carried forward. It's really flat now, isn't it? Yeah. Right around the MCG. He's just a workhorse, this player. Like Ambrose, like he's a competitive beast. He pushes up, he plays that third tall. Disposal 15 for him. Chappie's at the back looking dangerous. Simpson there gets to the footy first and paddling cleverly for the line. Over it goes. So Essendon, their lead is 41 points. It was 36 at the final change. They've kicked nine of the last 11 goals in this game. It's been quite a dominant performance from them. Bell. Gleeson this time sliding to his knees. Can send them forward again. Looks a good player, Gleeson. That's a clever kick. Not much room to work in. Bell Chambers gives it to Hibbert. Again, that kick not ideal either. And getting back, Everett takes a good mark and handballs to Doherty. Well, Gleeson's uncle would be having mixed feelings at the moment. He'd be pleased for his nephew, but he'd be really disappointed for the Blues. And, well, Henderson went searching for his left hamstring, I think, then we'll keep an eye on him. Cripps back inside. Good use of the football, Murphy. Well, suddenly Simpson has space. Jones can run to 50, can run further than that. He's got a paddock. He's decided to hit it from 50. Well, he did well. He finished it, decided that he was more comfortable from there. The Blues get one against the flow. Positive passages of play for Carlton, where they've been able to find players free in their front half. And a really good finish here from Jones. Just lined it up. One thought in mind, bang. Mark Murphy was involved there. 21 disposals for Murphy, 32 for Watson. The leaders for their respective clubs. Big discrepancy. Casbolt, clever paddle for Gibbs. Had the footy and then lost it. Ellard needs to make an attempt. Essendon players looking around as if to suggest to the umpire that no legitimate attempt was made. The umpire saying it's OK. Contested possession stats again. They're well in front, aren't they, Carlton? Yeah, huge discrepancy. 38, Watson, Stanton. Sends a high ball in the Goddard direction. Game number 250, yeah. double team. He's looking for a free kick. Here's the young Irishman in his first game. Well done, Burn. Kicks the football oh, no, forward, man. and Murphy marks. Pops one over the top to Ellard on the wing. He's got some pace, Burn, and he's been composed when he's had the footy in his hands. 
Clever mark by Judd. He plays on quickly, goes long. Kaz Bolt was the target. Hooker read it well. Great judgment. Good hands. Tim, it's been well documented this week that Stephen Savani has been given a fairly autonomous approach about what he's going to do to this list. Where, where do you start when you look at this list? What do you think is the most important thing they go searching for when they start to rebuild? I'll let you have time on that, but... They need talent. That's what they need. They need to go to the draft. They need to get as much young talent as they possibly can. And then they've got to be patient. They've got to develop that talent. So to get as much young talent as you can, are you unloading at the top end? You might have to. Yeah. yeah. You might have to throw something out there. I mean, we've seen clubs do that in the past. We saw Hawthorne do that many years ago with John Hay. Got a couple of picks in. They were able to just restock the pantry, and away you go again. Trent Code, uh, Crowd was sent west. They rebuilt the list. Well, Henderson, he's provided a bit forward. Now, Walker, he can go back in his first game as a blue this year to kick his first goal. A minor score only next to his name. Let's bring it back to five goals. Are they out of it, Basil? The way they're playing, they don't look capable at the moment, but as we've seen a couple in a row, things can change quickly. Well, they haven't kicked back-to-back -back goals so far this afternoon, so Jones kicked the last at the seven-minute mark to make it a 35-point margin. Walker has seen the Blues go back-to-back, -back. so 29 points. I wonder if Mick Malthouse feels a touch of optimism. Back-to-back -back goals by the Blues. The lead is under 30 points, 29 points. And they get the next one. Wood, very short run-up. He stood virtually beside the umpire when he bounced the football. Carazzo taken forward, deserved a free kick. In his back was Ashby, no free kick. Tim, you speak about leadership. Ben Robert Smith was called in, the VC recipient, and he spoke to the players and the staff and spoke about the missions he'd been on and selflessness and moral courage and leadership and fighting when the chips are against you. Yep. And apparently it was extraordinary, but that's exactly what they've got to do now, isn't it? Yep. They've Fire just on. got to find a way now. You know, they've got to have that... They've still got to have that belief that this game is still alive. Now... Well, Kieran Byrne did well there to Carazzo, to Henderson, and all of a sudden... Because you've got to believe you can win. It doesn't matter what the circumstances in a game. We saw Essendon last week against Hawthorne, and it looked like that game was over. They kicked three goals in you know, a couple of minutes to win that game. So you've still got to believe that you can win. Now, do enough Carlton players still believe that this game's alive? This man does. Judd, brilliant. Back to Murphy. Here they come again, the Blues. Inside 50. Can they win the football here? Fletcher, slow to get rid of it. Holding the ball. Illegal disposal. Oh, with the hand. On the full. Oh, you can see it from 30 metres away. Can you? Yeah, I reckon we did handle it. Great chase by Cripps. He was oh, right there. Country. Mark's here. Hasn't kicked a goal at senior level. 15. So for three in a row for the Blues. And then the belief might rise a little more. Well, while you've got Judd out there, who believes, he might be able to drag a few along with him, Basil. So I wonder if his teammates are aware. Cripps for his first goal in senior football. The boy from Northampton, Josh Kennedy country. Oh, yeah. Unfortunately, not the accuracy of Kennedy from last week. A behind only the lead. 28 points, and now Stanton has done it. Well, this is incredible. He can't believe it. Nor can Stanton. We're going to have a ball up at the top of the square. Another opportunity for the Blues to make it three in a row. Put on the line. No ball. OK. Throwing it up here. Well, the Blues simply must find a way out of the ruckus. Bagley. Play on, not 15, play on. Just a loose ball now. Blues must win it. First man onto it, just knocking it forward. Melksham didn't take possession, so Bell just right. shot it wide. Right. No, right. That's a great tackle by Zaki yeah. Nero. Straight back. It's a very Tire good call ball. from the umpire if it's right, because he was on the wrong side, but he was confident in the call. Well, Ashby at full stretch, couldn't quite take it cleanly. Bell inside, Yaron back to Bell it goes. The Blues searching for the third in a row. Carlton! 
The crowd had just started to come back into this game too in the last couple of minutes. Well, not quite from Casbolt or Jones, Bagley, Fletcher, Goddard. Now quickly to Gleeson. Zaharakis, Stanton, Heppel into the middle of the ground. Look at the movement from the Bombers. Now hurriedly the ball goes forward. Kieran Byrne got Collier to chase. who will get support from the skipper in Murphy. And Murphy might use the debutant. He does. Well done, the Irishman. Works it wide to Yaron. Bouncing ball. You've just joined us. The boos are for the left hook. Yaron applied to Chapman early in the game. Armfield out the back, setting himself. Walker took a big grab against the Bombers that spot years ago. It's going to be a Bombers free kick. Relax. Well, the crowd obviously have... I think they've got the belief that Carlton still can come home with this. They're getting the ball in. It could have been quite easy for Carlton to shut up shop and not worry and try and play defensive. They're still trying to have a crack to get back into this game. Stanton gets it from Hooker. Ambrose onto the ground. Now, if it sits for him, he could be away. Rowe there with him. Ambrose close to the line, trying to find the ball towards Zaharakis. Well done, Tui. In front of Chapman. Simpson close to the foot. He got there first. Hard ball to win now, Rowe. Handball forward and Simpson kept coming for him. Henderson onto the ground. Going to provide a target straight away. Got his hands up in front. They keep moving forward, the Blues. Well done, Henderson. Puts the ball towards Bell. Everett, in fact, and Everett not paid the mark. Unlucky. He plays on quickly. Back towards the square. Everett's kicked it. They've kicked three in a row. It's not game over yet. Here's a kick by Henderson there. Everett. Now, this wasn't paid. There's was just a hand in there from Ashby, obviously. But uh, smart play. Outside 50 off one step. I mean, that's a big snap. No, no, it's not contestable. Well, if you're an Essendon fan now, knowing what you've seen in the first round against the Swans and then in the second against Hawthorne, right now you're thinking nine minutes and 19 seconds is an eternity. The Swans from the clouds and the Hawks... Got in front by 16 after trailing hopelessly and the Bombers found a way. 22 points the margin. I mean, they've absolutely, as we've mentioned many times, they've smashed Essendon into stoppages, but also in contested balls. So they've been aggressive, they've been working hard around the contest. It was just their finishing in the first three quarters of football that let them down. Watson got the Bombers out to a 41-point lead, six-minute mark of this first turn. The Blues suddenly with a little more confidence. Simpson penetrating ball. The pack, it forms. Jones, well, first grab, couldn't quite take it cleanly. Stanton Bagley, kick smothered. How does it fall? Cripps had an opportunity moments ago. Ripped away by Watson. Back it goes to Hurley. That left boot of his that has got the Bombers out of trouble in recent times. Jamison read it so well. Quickly, on it goes to Carazzo. Inside 50. It's all about Henderson now. He's got a couple to beat. Couldn't beat them. Bagley happy to fumble it over. 21, 21 points the margin. Yeah, 21 just hanging on, aren't they? They're just doing enough to hang on at the moment, the Bombers. I mean, they really do need to score. To win this game, I think they're still going to have to score another goal, Essendon. 36 points was the lead at three-quarter time in favour of the Blues. Six goals, the biggest they've come back from at three-quarter time. 32 points. That was against Brisbane back in 2008. And... If you're keeping the numbers, 34 points at three-quarter time was Essendon's lead in round one against Sydney. Different opposition here. Casbolt, he had it in his hands. Well done by Heppel. He got it back. He used Watson. That was clever. Merritt. And then ended up back with him. And then Carlisle finds Melksham in the middle of the ground. Next goal to stem the tide. Long way from home. Fletcher. Short for Bagley. So he decides to go with a long one. Tui pushing off. Chapman did all the hard work. Then the footy just bounced into his face. Ambrose kept it alive. Collier trying to get his boot to ball. Desperate stuff by the defence and well done. The young Irishman in his first game, Kieran Byrne, since the moment was his, did everything to get his hands on the footy and forces the stoppage at the top of the square. Well, the Bombers desperate just to... Stop the rot for the moment. In the end, Casbolt, as he has a tendency to do, kicks it through for a point. But on this occasion, the Blues happy with that. Here they go. They've got three players on the outside here. Well, it's unlikely, but we've got used to the unlikely in the last...
couple of weeks with Essendon. Four goals for the Blues to snatch an improbable win. Can the improbable become reality? Bagley, terrific. Just got to take a little bit of time off the clock here, Essendon. Just maintain possession of the ball. They've got the numbers behind the ball. There's no need for them to go hard and quick here. Well, Goddard measures things. He's got a leading Danaher. Knocked away. Quickly, it's into the hands of Bell. Threads it through into the middle. Jamison, clever. Little slap to Murphy. Dooley needed to do. Murphy pulls the kick. Now Cripps. He measures things up from 50 metres. Cripps. Offline back to 21. He did the right thing, though. He had a ping in it. And uh, he had plenty of time to steady and settle. He's had a couple of shots at goal. He's going to be an outstanding player, Cripps. Terrific play by Jamison across halfback as well. Danaher was open, got a fist to it, created that rebound. A few minutes to go, but Carlton's still in this. They're winning the contested footy and they're making Essendon earn every kick that they get. Four goals in six and a half minutes. It's doable. It's unlikely. It's improbable. It's not the favourite result, but it's achievable. But that is not going to help. Hooker the mark and then the 50 metres against and that's just poor discipline and a lack of reading of the situation. <laughs> Bell, it was just a touch, just a faint touch, but Hooker too smart in that situation. He let the ball go, got the 50, not a generous 50, a high ball, inside 50, fisted forward by Rowe. Tough one for Everett, well done Bell. Bell again, not sure about the direction of that one. Ambrose, Chapman started the game in a fashion that he wouldn't have liked. He kicks back on goal and Simpson just filling up the gap. Top of the goal square, the custodian, the goalkeeper role, does the right thing, takes off, kick towards the middle. Henderson, height advantage against Bagley. Bagley just worked him under the football. He'll be happy. That's good play by Bagley. Giving away height there to Henderson, just used his body, sort of tunneled in under him legally and just force that boundary throwing. A lot of Essendon players got hands on hips. They're looking tired. Coming off an eighth in the best and fairest for Bagley. He's become an important part of this Essendon wrecking crew. Wood, he wanted Gibbs, just missed him. And then a little toe poke from Bell Chambers. Suddenly Kieran Byrne works it back. Well, Gibbs to space. Cripps, clever. Simpson, tunnel ball, wide. Blue's still alive, still a heartbeat. Bell. Driving ball forward. Walker front spot. Jones out the back. Saw the runner. Now, how does it bounce? For, well, ugly for Yaron initially. Everett receives. Everett, he's offline. Well, again, how cruel can the Sharon be? Well, not so much the Sharon. I mean, the bounce didn't favour them, but he had plenty of time then to be able to size that up, just settle himself. And kick the goal. Bit unlucky, though. If it, if it wasn't it, that difficult to shot, though. If it bounces into the hands of Yaron, he runs right into an open goal. Hibbert now. Called to go. Kicks to himself. Long one. Still not dead yet, the Blues. Simpson, clever. Uses Allard. Inside 50 again. Yaron, the target over his head. Bagley. Good tackle, Yaron. Got him. Needs to be a genuine attempt. Umpire right there and said... He couldn't do any more than that. Carlton, seven of the last eight scores, so they are really forcing the issue here, and they've kicked three, four, and one out of bounds. So still in an attacking zone. So Bagley now the blood rule. Umpire did well there, came around, had a look, checked the shoulder, said, there's the blood. Jog off, Mark, please. <laughs> this probably he doesn't have to get off quickly at all though does he I mean really he can take as much time as he likes to get off told to jog by the umpire so this situation favours Essendon just takes a little bit of sting out of the run of the Blues he's clever Bagley he's jogging like Cliff Young <laughs> he's not streaming he's giving the Bombers as much time as they can and what the players should be doing now is they should the Essendon players should be setting themselves the Carlton players doing likewise just trying to open up an attacking space here deep in their forward pocket who can they get the ball in the hands of here, Carlton, okay, and try and instigate a score? So here we go. Just under five minutes to play. They still need four goals. That was a very clever tap. Howlett on the end of the good work from Bell Chambers. Clearing kick row. Worked his way in front. Carlisle did brilliantly. Ambrose had the footy momentarily. They wanted it and wanted it badly. Tough one. 
eventually it comes out Gleeson's way to row to Simpson to Tui to set them up and suddenly it's Irishman to Irishman and the Blues are away again well tough Bell not quite mopped up Hibbert well done Stanton over the top to Hurley calm heads in the back six Hurley's kick terrific to Ashby Melksham he's at half forward he's got a one-on-one -on -one with a debutante well, Armfield got a fist onto it. Little fumble for Merritt. Ran over the football. Armfield went and got it. Got taken to ground. The tackle is strong from the skipper. So, yes, and then they had to show more patience. I mean, they've got to slow this down. They've got the lead. They don't have to force the pace in this game. And that's what they should be telling each other. Well, that was the call from Goddard in the defensive 50, waving his arms around furiously. But... The message didn't quite get through. Carlton has to go. I mean, they've just got to go forward. Every player here from Carlton, or as many as they can, they've just got to go forward with this stoppage. They've got to anticipate that they're going to get some momentum from Wood here and go. The equation is against them. Right now for the Blues, it's got to be all gas, no breaks. Wood, a fumble. Murphy comes back to him. Can he find a target inside 50? Ellard takes the diving grab. He'll be right on his distance. Here it is. They should be trying to just open up, find some space here. Essen trying to organise themselves to fill those spaces. This is a tough kick from this part of the ground. Goddard barking orders there. The clock, it continues to tick. So inside three minutes, Elard hasn't registered a score for the afternoon. Has it got the journey? It has got absolutely everything. Back to 14. Three goals required. 2.43 on the clock. Yeah. Wonderful that's a fabulous finish by That's a fabulous shot from there. With something There's on some the extra line. numbers behind the ball here, though. Basri, have a look at here. Essen got one extra, two extra numbers behind the ball. Last four goals of the game, the Blues. Margin back to 14 points. Judd goes long. Big fist. It was an important one. Gleeson over there, Armfield trying to want, find a way through. Did cleverly back to row. It might come back to row. Did he give a high tackle on his fellow number 17? No. Oh. Up it will come again. And the Blues starting to genuinely believe that they can do something quite remarkable here. They trailed at three-quarter time by 36 points. It's only 14 Go. points now. Clearing kick, not far. Murphy got Ambrose's kick. Henderson! Not quite. Waiting down. Safe pair of hands. And Gleeson gets it from Heppel. And he'll slow things down now. To hug the boundary line is what the Bombers will see as their MO for the rest of the afternoon. Goddard through the middle. One will snuff out the Blues. Collier, the hero last week. Just dances around. That's, well, he's kept possession, happy to mop up some time too. Now, Merritt, if he can find a jumper, regardless of whether they kick a goal or not, it'll finish the Blues. They can't find a jumper. The Blues still alive, only just. Now they're dead. Yeah, he's cramping. Cramping badly. Well, they are tired and they are weary, the Bombers, but that was the goal that was required. Four goals in a row to the Blues. Jones, Walker, Everett and Illard. They found a way, the Bombers, on the tiredest of legs. That was a really smart play there by Collier. He just had nothing forward of him. He just held on to the ball. And uh, there you see a very, very sore Benny Howell. He looks like he's got uh, cramp in, in, in the groin, I think. Nice run, Ed. Nasty place to have it, Baz. That's for sure. Let's hope it's only cramp. So the Blues lead. Early in the game was extinguished quickly. It's been all Bobby lessened in their comeback, Charles though. Him. A credit Bobby to the them in this Bobby final shorts. term. Joe, out. Check that scoring in the I've final the quarter. 4-6 Carlton, 2-2 two, two, yeah. Essendon. Go so they really did throw everything at it in the final term. It was a comeback almost out of nowhere. And Murphy's kick now for Gibbs. Merritt right there with him. Goddard in his 250th. 
a moment or two ago. The 100 game player with an important goal, the sealer. The kick forward by Merritt. Danaher kept it in momentarily. Now the ball over the line in the final minute of the game. Well, the last three years, 0 3, just the eighth time in 100 years for the Blues. Tough times for Mick and. As they've said during the week, it is a time to rebuild. But this last quarter has been one of their best for the season against the Bombers, who have put together some remarkable performances so far this year. Tui, the handball back and out of space and the diving Doherty, unable to complete it. Suddenly Stanton sets up another, perhaps Howlett. Well, no one at home for the Bombers. <laughs> and with... Little time on the clock. Gee, there's some tired players out there now. They just can't wait for this siren to sound on both sides. And Carlton have been brave. They've been aggressive. They've attacked all day. They've been competitive. They haven't. They've just missed the polish today. Now, all credit to them. Second quarters weren't pretty. Melksham out of the congestion. Quick kick. Clock down to 14 seconds. Lead is 21 points. Well, it is a credit to Carlton that it's this close this late in the game. It looked like being horrible for them at one stage. Murphy back to Jamison. Just got his handball away in time. Kasbolt now. Last seconds of this game. So Essendon will improve their record to 2-1. and one. And it's 0-3 and three for the Blues. They showed a little bit but Brendan Goddard in game 250 celebrates with a 21-point win over the Blues. To win the premiership